We'll move on to New South Wales, but it'll be very interesting to see where the teals sit on this one uh, when Parliament returns, given the affluence of uh, the electorates they represent. New South Wales, I mentioned the dramatic turnaround, if the polls are to be believed, for the Premier Dominic Perrottet. He's narrowed the gap there, coalition on 48, Labor on 52. That's up 2% for the coalition since September. And as Premier, preferred Premier, he has stretched his lead over Chris Minns by 10 points, 43% of voters backing Dominic Perrottet. Compared to Chris Minns, I think he's dropped two points there to 33. Uh, I, again, I say, Dennis, if the polls are right, this is a sign of late momentum for the coalition. But given how tight the seats are across the board and talk that even if Labor wins, it's a minority government sort of outcome, where do you think it's likely to land this far out? I know it's crystal ball stuff, but... but I don't know that people are actually focused on the New South Wales state election. Maybe that's part of the move in the numbers today. Well, there may also be a federal overlay, uh, a, a feeling that, you know, the federal Labor's not doing all that well, uh, and so state Labor may be suffering as a result of that. But I think the really crucial numbers here in the news poll are the primary vote, yes, it's, it's changed around a bit, but... Not a, a great deal of difference from the last election. Uh, I think the real problem mm. here is for Chris Minns. For Chris Minns as a leader, uh, we're a month from the election and the leader of the opposition is well behind the Premier. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's state or federal. If the leader is way behind the uh, incumbent Prime Minister or Premier, it is a real problem because the leader is not seen as a viable alternative. And I think that Chris Min's uh, very low target, you know, softly, softly approach has started to have an impact because people don't know who he is, they don't know what he stands for, and although they may think, oh, well, Dominic Perrottet's done this wrong or that wrong or he's this or he believes in this or whatever, at least they have an idea of who he is and they think he actually believes in some things. And given that Labor has to win... Nine seats for victory. This is not easy in New South Wales. New South Wales isn't like Queensland or Western Australia or even Victoria, where you see big shifts. In New South Wales, changes of government tend to just come in. Nine seats to get is a big ask, a month out with the leader well behind the uh, incumbent Premier. I think Labor's got a problem. And what we're more likely to see... You know, if we're going to uh, have a, a crystal gaze, uh, is that it is now more likely that we will have a minority government in New South Wales, probably a coalition minority government, given the flavour of the crossbench. But what we're actually seeing is going to be a very close election and possibly not the walkover that everyone expected Labor would have. Just a quick one. I mentioned this uh, last week on the anniversary of the Ukraine invasion by, uh, by uh, Russia. 67 of the 81 diplomatic missions that left Kyiv have now reopened. We are still basing our embassy out of Poland. Over the weekend, President Zelensky asked about the embassy, had this to say. Would you like to see Australia's ambassador return to Ukraine? I, I, I had big, huge deficit with armed vehicles. And it's very important, yes, moment. And I don't want now to, sh to share all the information, how many uh, we've got from Australia. But anyway, we've got it. And that is great. That's why to shake hand the ambassador of, of Australia, I, I, I'll, I'll do it with pleasure. Please come. Come back. Okay, we're the largest non-NATO contributor. If Biden can wander the streets of Kiev, surely we can put our ambassador uh, back there in the capital. Well, I think that uh, given the amount of support we are giving to Ukraine, the number of Australian citizens who are in the Ukraine, the fact that we are training Ukrainian troops in the UK, admittedly, uh, that we could do uh, with representative on the ground. Now, this isn't to criticise the people who are trying to do it from Poland. I know they have been doing a very good job there from Poland for quite some time. But there comes a time when, risk and all, we do need to be represented along with the rest of the nations 
who are there in the capital, Ukraine, and that is where we need to be. Dennis Shanahan, I'll leave it there, but I will tell people you've written a cracker of a column today in The Australian about all the Malcolm Turnbull thought bubbles that uh, blew up and burst, including, of course, uh, Snowy 2.0. But I'll leave it there. I run out of time. See you next week.